If you can stand with us to the book of Isaiah, Isaiah 60 and 1. Isaiah 60 and 1. If you're able to stand, we ask that you stand with us as we honor the Lord at the reading of his word. And it reads, Arise, shine, for thy light is come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon thee. For behold, the darkness shall cover the earth, and gross darkness the people. But the Lord shall arise upon thee, and his glory shall be seen upon thee. And the Gentiles shall come to thy light, and the kings to the brightness of thy rising. Lift up thine eyes round about and see all they gather themselves together. They come to thee. Thy sons shall come from far and thy daughters shall be nursed at thy side. And we're going to talk on a subject today. This is your time to shine. Let's bow our heads right now. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the word of the Lord today. Let it go forth on the unction and power of your spirit. We forever praise and lift you up. God, let your glory rest upon us today. Let the light of your spirit and power be revealed through our lives. God, lift us up. Put us in a place where you long for us to be. Help us to be receptive to the will of God, the perfect will of God, let it be done in our lives. Help us to put all of our issues and fleshly ambitions aside and to seek you like never before. Seeking first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, knowing that all things shall be added unto us in Jesus' name. And everybody said amen. amen. You may be seated. As we look at this passage of scripture, we understand that Isaiah is prophesying about Israel. And he was talking about what God was going to do with Israel in the end time. Uh, Israel had been uh, such a, a, a group of people that have been up and down as far as serving the Lord is concerned. Uh, they started off serving him, then they allowed various things to come and hinder uh, their worship and praise of their God. And how many know you've got to be consistent when it comes to praising God? You can't start off coming to church and then stop. You can't start off praying and then stop. You can't uh, start off giving and stop. If you want the blessings of the Lord, you've got to learn how to be consistent. God is a rewarder of them that what? Diligently seek him. So we have to diligently seek him and pursue him. And down through the years, and we're talking about centuries here, the city of Jerusalem has been uh, the most famous city in the world throughout the course of time. Uh, this city has been conquered time and time again. Uh, this city has survived so many uh, destruction by different nations. The Assyrians destroyed uh, Jerusalem and God raised it back up. Uh, the Babylonians destroyed Jerusalem. And God raised it back up. The Romans destroyed Jerusalem. And God raised it back up. And it seems like regardless of what the enemy has done, 
to try to not only destroy the city of Jerusalem, but also the Jews, period. They have survived so many atrocities. They have survived so many uh, holocausts. We are familiar with the one in our age, but throughout the ages, uh, the devil has tried to destroy this group of people. And how many know that, that the enemy hates God's people with a passion? And when you come to God, you need to realize that there is a target on you because when the devil sees you, he sees the blood of Jesus. And he will try his best to, to destroy you and to put you down and to ruin you on every hand. But thank God, just like he watches over Israel, he watches over you and I today. And I don't know about you, but I, I, I'm not... I'm not uh, afraid of any of the enemy's devices because I serve a God that sits high and it looks low. I serve a God that has proven to me time and time again that he can come to my rescue. As a matter of fact, he has proved to me that the battle is not mine, but the battle belongs to him. And if I'll just do my part, he'll do his part. And how many know God got your back? Tell somebody, say, God got your back. Uh, this city, Jerusalem, is uh, uh, considered by three major religions to be their holy city. And I never forget going to Jerusalem. And uh, once you go there, you'll notice that in that city, you, you'll, have, you'll have Muslims. Uh, you'll hear them on the loudspeakers as they're calling people to pray because they feel that uh, Jerusalem is their city. They have their uh, Dome of the Rock. It's that big uh, gold building that you see every time you see a picture of Jerusalem. And they have their temple there and it's built on the rock where they believe that Mohammed had, uh, had risen and went back to heaven. And uh, I went in that, in that place uh, because I, was, I, I wanted to see what was going on. And I, I went inside that Dome of the Rock and uh, I, it, it, I went in there binding and loosing. Amen. Because you could, you could just feel demonic uh, presence in there. So I went in there praying and binding the devil and, and uh, uh, went down to the rock where they say Muhammad had, had been and laid hands and rebuked the devil right there. Uh, b because... Uh, the Bible said, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is what? One Lord. There's only one God. Praise God. There's, there's only one God. And thank God I have a revelation of who he is. And so, uh, the, so the Muslims are there and also uh, the Christians are there. And uh, one loudspeaker is crying out. Uh, for the prayer for the Muslims, and then you look around and you see other Christians walking down through the city of Jerusalem just praying. Uh, they got various places where you can go uh, as you tour that city that speaks of uh, uh, Christ and where he was and uh, where they believe that he was buried. So all of these things are going on at the same time. And then the, the Jews are there and you know, they're blinded to the fact that Jesus is Lord and Savior. So they are, they are worshiping God according to the Old Testament. So a lot of things are going on in Jerusalem. And even today, the fight that's going on, uh, it's all about, it's all about uh, the Jews trying to further destroy them and take over that city. So regardless of what uh, man says about peace, peace and safety, it's not going to be no real peace until God comes back, amen, and set up his kingdom and he will become the king of kings and the Lord of lords to everybody. The Bible says every knee shall bow and what? Every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. But when we look at Israel, we must understand that that they are an example to us. We can learn from what they went through. 
And the things that, that they did that were wrong, we can read in the Bible how they had to pay and suffer for wrong decisions that they made in life. Uh, in the book of uh, 1 Corinthians, the 10th chapter and 11th verse, it says, now these things happen unto them for in samples or in examples or instructions, and they are written for our admonition upon whom the ends of the world are come. So whatever they went through, we can read the word of God and see that, hey, Israel went down that road. That's what happened to them. Praise God. If we go down that same road, same thing will happen to us. Israel took a left turn and they went in the ways of righteousness and the blessings of the Lord came upon them. Hey, if I take that road, then the blessings of the Lord will be upon me also. See, God has made it plain and simple in his word. And we have a choice. He said, choose you this day whom you will serve. And so the scriptures basically warns us against doing the same thing that will cause destruction and pain. And so when we look at life, how many know life is full of setbacks? The Bible say man that is born of a woman is of few days and full of trouble. So we're going to have trouble in this world, regardless of who you are, regardless of who you call yourself, and regardless of your stature or status in life. So when we look at the word of God, Jesus told his disciples, he said, uh, John 16 and 33, he said, These things have I spoken unto you that ye might have peace. He said, In the world you shall have what? Tribulation. He said, But be of good cheer because I have overcome the world. The Lord warned his disciples about fear that would come on mankind towards the end of the ages, that, that men would be uh, uh, killing one another, and, and there would be wars and rumors of wars, and, and there would be problems all over uh, the world. But he was trying to let them know uh, through Isaiah that you shouldn't, Fear or worry about anything. Isaiah 41 and 10 says, Fear thou not, for I am with thee. Oh my goodness. God lets us know that we don't have anything to fear. I don't care what's going on. I don't care how many terrorists uh, blow up stuff here and there. You don't have to fear. Uh, we Recent events have, have caused fear in a whole nation. Three people cause fear in a whole nation, disrupt the whole uh, entire nation. Everybody uh, fearful, afraid to go out, locking their doors. Uh, but let me tell you something, my friend. God is telling us to fear not. You don't have anything to worry about. He said, I am with thee. How many know the Lord is with you? Amen. He said, be not dismayed, for I am thy God. He said, I will strengthen thee. I will help thee. I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. In other words, God is saying, I got you covered. I got you covered. Regardless of what the enemy tried to do to you, uh, how he tries to disrupt your home, how he tries to uh, put fear on, in your life about various things, including your financial situation or your health situation. How many know, whatever it is, my friend, the Lord is saying, don't fear because I am with you. See, one reason you shouldn't fear, and, and that is the fact that God has filled you with his spirit. Now, if you don't have a spirit, you have a reason to fear because anything could happen at any time. And if you die and you're not ready, then then you're going to have a, a horrible eternal life. But if you are in God, if you're saved, that's why it's so important to seek the Lord 
while you have a chance. Seek the Lord while you have a mind. Seek the Lord and repent. Praise God while God is drawing you to him. And there's going to come a time in your life where the Spirit of the Lord is going to draw you unto uh, the, the Lord because he wants to save you. It's not the will of God that any should perish, that all should come unto repentance. And so when God is dealing with you, my friend, don't, don't, don't slam the door in his face. When he's dealing with you, you need to come. When he's speaking to your heart, and you know when God speaks to you. I don't, I don't care who you are, my friend. You know when the word of the Lord is coming for you, then don't try to push it uh, uh, on the sidelines you need to receive it as a word from the Lord. And so uh, God is saying that, hey, don't be afraid. You don't have anything to worry about because as, uh, a, 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 as, I, as I live, so shall you live also. Amen. So as a child of God, we must understand that, that God's strength becomes our strength. Amen. His power becomes our power. His anointing becomes our anointing as we come to him and give our lives to him. When you look at the word of God, you see uh, three Hebrew boys. They trusted in the Lord. You know, they were uh, they could have been very fearful because they were getting ready to be thrown in a fiery furnace unless they bowed down. But because they refused to bow down when they were thrown in the furnace, how many know they looked up and Jesus was right there with them? And I don't care what the devil tries to do, what he tries to throw you in or throw you out of. Just keep your eyes open because you're going to see Jesus. Hallelujah. <laughs> Paul and Silas, you can understand them being thrown in the jailhouse, uh, being guarded by soldiers. That could have been a fearful situation, but rather than being afraid, they what? They prayed and they sang praises. And so we've got to learn how to praise him anyhow. Regardless of what we're going through, regardless of how hard it gets in this life, we've got to learn how to praise our God. You know, God's people are special people. We are a special group of people. Amen. And, and I don't know about you, but I... I receive that as something special from the Lord. You have to see yourself as somebody special. You have to see yourself as a child of the Most High God. The Lord spoke to his people uh, through Moses in Exodus 19 and 6. And he said, and, and ye shall be a, unto me a kingdom of priests. And a holy nation. These are the words which thou shalt speak unto the children of Israel. Wait a minute, I thought these were slaves. They were. Wait a minute, I thought they were bound. They were. Wait a minute, I thought Pharaoh had control over their lives. He did. But in the midst of all that, the Lord say, you are a kingdom of priests unto me. In other words, I've raised you up, and I don't care what claim the devil have on you. You are destined to victory. You are destined to be my special group of people. You see, when, when you look at who you are, you can't look at your wallet. That doesn't determine who you are. You can't look at what type of house you have. That doesn't determine who you are. Your job status really doesn't determine who you are. You have to look into the word of God to find out who you are. First Peter 2 and 9, Peter was telling the church, he said, you are a chosen generation. He said, you are a royal priesthood. He said, you are a holy nation. He said, you are a peculiar people that you should show forth the praises of him that have called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Maybe that don't excite you. Maybe you don't get excited when you hear something like that. 
But when I look at the goodness of Jesus, and when I look at where he brought me from, oh, when I look at the how, how I was bound by the enemy at one time, how I was on my way to a devil's hell, how I was fed up with the things in this life, not knowing where to go and who to turn to. But when I heard about Jesus, when I learned who he was and what he had in store for me, I turned my life around and I gave my life to him. And he began to reveal to me who we were. Praise God, we're not just anybody. Praise God, we're not just the run of the mill. We're not just somebody that, 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 that don't have a heavenly father. But God has raised us up for such a time as this. When he filled you with the Holy Ghost, he put himself inside of you. When he filled you with his spirit, he filled you with power. He, he filled you with his anointing. Amen. He has raised us up for such a time as this. And this is our day. This is our hour. At least this is my day. This is my hour. This is the time that, that God brought me into this world. This is the time that he raised me up for such an hour as this. And you got to realize, my friend, you're not here by coincidence. Amen. You were born into this world for a reason. God saved you for a reason. And he saved you for such a time as this. And it doesn't matter how many times the devil has knocked you down. The reason that you're here today today is because God has raised you up one more time. Praise God. Just like Israel, every time they tried to destroy Israel and Jerusalem, every time you look around, God would raise them up every time. And I stop by to tell you, my friend, the devil can't destroy you because God is in you. The devil can't bind you because God is in you. And he can break every shackle that the enemy can place upon your life. Come on, give him some praise in the house. And so you've got to understand who you are. Tell somebody, at least three people, tell them, said, I am a child of God. Amen. And we are the children of light. We are the children of light. Glory to God. I say we are the children of light. When God filled you up, he put his light on the inside of you. Look what Matthew said, 5 and 14. It said, ye are the light of the world. Glory to God. A city that, can, can, that is set on a hill cannot be hid. You see, the devil has tried his best to hide what God has put inside of you. The devil has tried his best, amen, for, to keep your family and friends from knowing who you really are. But I stopped by to tell you this year is the year of transition. This year the gloves are coming off. This year the darkness is going to shred and, and get out of your way. Why? Because God is calling his children to the light. Praise God. He's raising us up to be what he's called us to be. Ah, hell has got the news. Hell has got the email. Hell is reading about it on Facebook. There's something happening with the people of God. There's a stirring going on in the house of God. We thought we had them. We thought we could beat them down. But I see them rising up in the spirit and power of Almighty God. God. I see God moving like never before. I see God moving in the homes and houses and households and chasing devils out and bringing about power and anointing in your home and in your neighborhood. You better watch out, my friend. You ain't seen nothing yet. 
So Jesus said, ye are the light of the world. He said, a city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. See what God is doing in your life. If you will allow him to. Amen. You will get to the place you can't hide it no more. Amen. You will get to the place you got to open up your mouth and tell somebody. Amen. What God is working out in your life. It's going to become very, very visible. Amen. The anointing. People are going to feel it when you walk by. Amen. God's going to put a word in your mouth. Word of encouragement for somebody else. I'm telling you, my friend, this is our day. This is our hour. We are transitioning into the children of the Most High God. You say, neither do men light a candle and put it on a bushel. Come on, you can't hide what God is doing for you. You got to open your mouth and tell somebody. Come on, when God heals you, you got to tell somebody. When God bless you financially, you got to tell somebody. Uh, don't get to the place that, well, I don't want to tell somebody because they might, they might ask for some money. Let me tell you something. Uh, if you tell it, he'll give you some more. Praise God. Uh, hey, man, it's nothing but a setup uh, for blessing. Uh, if he hear you, tell somebody. Uh, if he bless you with a new home, uh, amen, invite folks over. Have a party. Praise God. If you get a promotion on your job, tell somebody uh, and let them know it wasn't nothing that I did. Uh, but it's the power of God and it's the glory of God and it's the light of God that's shining in my life. Oh, you don't know. I don't think you really understand what God is about to do. But everything you've been through, every trial that you've gone through has brought you to this particular place in time. Every time you got knocked down and got back up. Every time you got slapped and you turned the other cheek. Every time the devil tried to destroy you, but it just didn't work. All of that was nothing but a setup for right now this day and time when God would reveal his glory in your life. When God would shine on you like never before. You better get ready for a transition my friend. You better get ready for the change. You better get ready for a new you. You better get ready to experience some things like you never experienced before. See See, the enemy, the enemy tried his best uh, to hold you down. Uh, he called in reinforcements. Uh, amen. To try to knock you out. Uh, demon after demon uh, approach you uh, and try to shut down your testimony. Uh, try to shut down your praise. Uh, but here you are once again on a Sunday morning uh, opening up your mouth praising the God of your salvation. Uh, regardless of what he tried to do to you this week he still can't shut you up I don't care what you went through this week the fact that you're here right now let's hell know you can't touch this you can't do nothing with what God has placed inside of me Turn to somebody and say, I know who I am. I know who I am. I'm getting a revelation now. I'm going to shake myself. Come on, somebody. Hey, man, I'm going to shake myself. Why? Because I want hell to get the news. Hey, man, that you fought a good fight. And you'll never finish your course, devil. Because I'm on a roll now. I'm going someplace in God. See, I got news for hell. They should have stopped us when they had a chance. I say they should have stopped us. They should have stopped you when they had a chance. They should have stopped you when you was discouraged. They should have stopped you when you were depressed. They should have stopped you when you had financial problems. But the fact 
that they couldn't do it. They in trouble now because a new day is dawning. New things are happening. A new power, a new grace is falling on the people of God. I don't know about you, but I'm feeling new strength. Anybody feeling a new strength? Uh, something's happening on the inside, my friend. Something is happening on the inside. A new power, a new anointing is coming on the people of God. Glory to God. Uh, old stuff don't work no more. Uh, old tricks he used to play on you just don't work no more. Why? Through my trials and tribulation, I have gained wisdom. Amen. I know that's a one-way street and I shouldn't be going down it. I know this person got a bad spirit and I shouldn't fool with him. I know this place is full of demonic activity, so I'm not going to even drive down the street. Hallelujah. Amen. So we have gained wisdom through our trials and tribulation. God has, has brought us to this particular place in time. He said, let your light so shine before men. He said, let your light so shine among men. He would not tell you to let your light shine if you didn't have a light. Is this making sense? So, so he, by him saying, let your light shine, then he's letting you know you have something that the world needs to see. Amen. He said that let your light so shine among men so that they may see your what? Good works. So how do we let our light shine? Well, one way of doing it is to do something good for somebody. Praise God is to say something good to somebody. See, we're living in a cutthroat, amen, knock you down world where people don't have anything to good, good to say about you or anybody else. But when you break out on the job and begin to compliment folks, huh? when you break out at the family reunion and start prophesying to people, huh? amen, when people see the type of life that you're living, huh? and you're not a backbiter, and you're not, you're not stabbing folks in the back, but, huh? but you're trying to help somebody else, huh? they begin to see a light shining inside of you, and they begin to see that you are different than other folks you're different from other folks because you're letting your light shine I'm seeing I'm seeing something in you that's this 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 different you you, 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 you're different. I see, I see that when you're going through something, you're not like everybody else. Everybody else is crying and boo-hooing, but, but you still got a smile on your face. And I, I know how folks are treating you, and I, I know how they're trying to do you, but, but you keep on smiling. And even though you've been down, you don't, you don't look like you've been down. Amen. How many know you can be broke and still be happy? I say you can be broke and still be happy. You can be broke and still shout. <laughs> Hallelujah. As a matter of fact, you're a little bit lighter, so you ought to shout a little bit harder. Praise God. I'm telling you, my friend, you can be sick and still glorify your God. Come on, if I couldn't say a word, I'd just wave your hand. How many have ever laid up in the bed with fever burning and amen the flu, but you lifted up your hand and say, God, I thank you for healing. I, I thank you, Lord, for delivering me. Amen. When you do that, my friend, you shine your light. And you let people know that there is a God that, that, that you are glorifying in heaven. Look what Ephesians 5 and 8 says. He says, for ye were sometimes darkness. Hmm. Say you were sometimes in darkness. How many of us came out of darkness? You were, you were in dark places. 
Come on, you were in dark clubs. You were in the dark rooms. Come on, you were, you were in the dark doing all kind of stuff that because your deeds were evil. And people knew you because they were in the dark with you. Amen. And they thought that you would remain in the dark with them. But Paul said you were sometimes, you were there, but you're not there anymore. Amen. Because something happened to you. You became a, a child of the light. Praise God. When God began to shine on you in that dark place, you begin to open up your eyes and you begin to see that I know I don't need to be up in here. Praise God. I, there's a better life for me. There's a better place for me to go. And you made a decision that the light of the Lord is a lot better than living in darkness. It's depressing while you're in darkness. Come on, you, you're under the influence of demons when you're living in darkness. Come on, chaos and confusion is all around you. But Paul said, uh, you, were, you were sometimes in darkness, but, but now ye are light in the Lord. Walk, and then he said, what? Walk as the children of light. You got to learn how to walk now. Come on, you got to walk with your head up. Stop putting your head down. Lift up your head, O ye gate, and be lifted up, ye everlasting door. For the king of glory shall come in. Who is the king of glory? The Lord, strong and mighty. So we know who we are, and we are in a place in time where God is about to do some extraordinary things. Tell somebody, he say, he's talking about me. He's talking about me. He's talking about me. He's talking about me. See, God is about to do something extraordinary in, in, in your life. I'm talking to somebody today. He, he is about to do something because, see, you've been hid. I say, you've been hid, Lighthouse. You know, I was, I, was, I was talking with the mayor, and you know what he told me? He said, see, y'all are the best kept secret in the city. That's what he said. And the prophet came. Huh? And he says, like, God has been hiding y'all. We even hidden in a certain part of the city. Most people don't even know this area exists. I've talked to people say, man, I've been here 30 some years and I didn't even know this was in Monroe. But see, God is strategic. Huh? He saves the best for last. And, 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 so, and so when he decides to shine his light on you, come on somebody, the devil can't put it out. Hallelujah. Go, glory to God. You, you see, when God get ready to reveal who you are to the world, ain't no devil in hell can stop what he's about to do. Praise God. And let, and let me tell you something, my friend. He's not just shining light on me. Because we're connected. He's not just shining light on you. Because we are connected. Praise God. We're all connected together. That's why it's so important for all of us to let our light shine. Praise God. All of us, the church in general, must let their light shine. Why? Because it's a crazy world out there. People are blowing themselves up to kill other folks. People don't care about their lives. They, they'll go out in a, in, a, in a blaze of glory just shooting everybody they can thinking that they're going to receive honor for that. But I'm, I'm, I'm like this, my friend. 
hey, you really don't understand the spirit that's using you. And you think you're going to be a martyr and think you're going to heaven and get seven, 70 virgins. You know, that's what they tell them. When you die, you go to heaven and uh, you get 70 virgins. Amen. And they're dealing with a lot of, a lot of, a lot of men. And, and, and I guarantee you, a lot of them is single. They ain't never been married. <laughs> if you do all you can, you can't take care of nothing but one woman. If you get, if you get 70, if you're going to do it right, what in the world are you going to do with 70? See, that's, that's when your goal is best on, based on the flesh. Come on, somebody. When I get to heaven, I'm not looking for it. nobody else but Jesus. Hallelujah. That's who I, I want to see the one that died for me. I, I want to see the one that uh, whose stripes I'm healed. I want to see the one that, that, that shedded his blood and, and came to the world so that I could be saved. That's who I want to see. Praise God. Ain't going to be no sex in heaven, no way. In case you say, well, I ain't going there. Well, I ain't going to be none in hell either. So it's going to be too hot down there. So don't get excited about <laughs> going the other way. Praise God. And all I get in, do what? Get understanding. Praise God. In, in the book of Micah, Micah uh, 70, uh, 7, I'm sorry, Micah 7 and 2, the prophet uh, Micah was seeking God for comfort because Micah, lived through uh, several kings, the reign of several kings. And he, he lived through the reign of good kings, and he lived through the reign of bad kings. But Micah's message never changed. See, I don't care what goes on on the outside. Don't let your message change. Don't let who you are in God change. I don't care who you get around, be the same person. When, when you get on the job, be you. Be, just be real. You know, if you be yourself, you don't have to put on. You don't have to act. Come on, just, just talk like you normally talk. You ain't got to twist your tongue and act all like you all this and all that. Because see, one of these times, you're going to miss your cue. You ever seen anybody just so sophisticated, just talking about oh, oh, this and that and this? And they got a child with them, and a, and a, and a child is pulling on them and screaming. Uh, yeah. Boy, you better shut up. I mean, you are. <laughs> oh, by the way, we. we... <laughs> You, you gotta, you gotta let your light shine, my friend. You can't cut your flashlight off and do some devil men or do something in the flesh. Come on, you gotta let your light shine at all times. Tell somebody, say, neighbor, this big light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. That's right, I said, big light, big light. You don't need a little light. This world is too dark. You need a big light. We are the light of the world through him. Micah 7 and 2 said the good man is perished out of the earth. And there is none upright among men. They all lie and wait for blood. They hurt every man his brother with a net. Micah was going through a time where people were just killing one another. Uh, you couldn't depend on nobody. Uh, the next verse, uh, Micah 7 and 6 he said, for the son dishonors his father, and the daughter raises up against her mother, and daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law, and a man's enemies are, are the men of his own house. Micah said, this is a mess up in here. 
uh, in the home, everybody is uh, up against everybody. Children disrespecting the parents. Uh, sons against the fathers and daughters against the mother. He said, it's, it's chaos and confusion. The next verse, he said, therefore, I will look into the Lord. I will wait for the God of my salvation. He said, my God will hear me. We've got to get to the place, church, that, that we have a, such a relationship with God that regardless of what's going on, on your job, in your house, in your family, you know that when you pray, God's going to hear you. And because I know he's going to hear me, I'm at peace with myself. Because I know he hears me when I pray, I'm going to turn it over to Jesus. Praise God. And I'm going to praise and worship my God. You can't pray and worry at the same time. Micah 7 and 8, he said, rejoice not against me, O mine enemies, when I fall. He said, don't, don't, don't get happy when you see me down. Don't, don't get happy when, you, when I fall on hard times and, and I lose my house. The one I testified about. Don't, 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 don't look at me funny when, when, when the, the, the furniture that I bought and had you to come and sit on it and you rejoice with me. Don't look at me funny when I can't afford it anymore. Don't look at me funny. Don't, don't, don't rejoice at me when I'm down. Huh? Because if you rejoicing when I'm down, the reason you're doing it you don't really know who I am. You don't know who I am, and you don't know what's in me. If you knew who I was, and if you knew what was in me, then you would know that sooner or later, I shall arise. Hallelujah. Amen. If you really understood who I was, and if you would just check my history, you would realize I've been down before. I've been sick before. I've been in the hospital before. I've been broke before. I've been without transportation before. I've been down, 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 down before. But every time, check the record. Every time, every time, every time, I was able to get back up. Why? Because God would always always bring me out of darkness into his marvelous light. See, I'm a child of light. <laughs> hey, man, you can't keep me down but so long. <laughs> you can't keep me in darkness but so long <laughs> because of who I am <laughs> and because of what God has placed <laughs> inside of me. <laughs> Church, we're going somewhere. Touch somebody and say, we're going somewhere. We're going somewhere. And we're going somewhere. <laughs> and in our text today, Isaiah 61, <laughs> the Lord is telling Israel, he said, arise, shine. He said, for thy light is come and the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. Oh, my, my, my. The Lord told Israel, like I say, the church is spiritual Israel. And we know he was talking to Jerusalem, but I believe he's talking to us right now. See, you got to learn how to get into the word and get a rhema word. Hey, man, this, this is the logos right here. But inside of this logos is a rhema word for somebody. God is telling somebody up in here, you need to rise. He's telling you, you need to get up. And then he said, arise and shine. In other words, the Lord wants you to show off what he's put inside of you. Come on, tell somebody, say, get up, get up, get up, get up, get up. It's time for you to get up. It's time for your rise. Huh? Amen. It's time for you to stop thinking huh, that you're nobody. Stop thinking huh, this is not going to happen. Stop thinking your dreams are not going to come true. Stop thinking. Huh, amen. You're not going to be a progressive and successful person. Stop thinking those thoughts. Arise.
He said, arise, arise and shine. And I'm telling somebody in here, this is your time. This is your year. This is your hour. This is the time that God has chosen, amen, to raise you up as a powerhouse for him. Amen. Don't let your past dictate your future. Hallelujah. Realize who you are in Christ Jesus and rise up. Come on, give God some praise in the house. He said, arise, shine. He said, for your light is come. See, you got to receive your light, not my light. But you got to receive your light. See, God has a light specially for you. Praise God. God has something that he's placed inside of you, my friend. And he's saying it's time for you to arise. You say, well, how can I get up? The lame man at the gate, beautiful, couldn't walk. And he asked alms and Peter and John said, silver and gold have I none. But in the name of Jesus Christ, amen, of Nazareth, he said, rise up and walk. How can you rise up when you can't walk? When you haven't walked in 40 years, how can you rise up and walk? Let me tell you something, my friend. When God says arise, let me, let me tell you, let me tell you something. When God says arise, within that word is miracle work and power. Within that word arise is dynamic uh, power that shatters everything that's been trying to keep you down. Within that word arise uh, comes the power to heal and touch the ligaments, the bone, the muscles, the marrow, anything that's necessary to cause you to get up. Within that word, these things are there. And I stop by to tell you, when he says rise, my friend, every devil that's been trying to hold you back, within that word arise comes demon breaking power hallelujah amen power to knock down every devil that has infiltrated your home every devil that has tried to discourage you every devil that's been trying to hold you back within that word arise comes the power of almighty god my 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 oh i feel the holy ghost in here you see The Lord said, the rain and the snow comes down from heaven, and it waters the earth, and then it produces bud, huh? And then the, the, the seed, the seed that turns into a bud, he said, it provides Seed for the sower and bread for the eater. Then he used that analogy to go on and say, so shall my word be that cometh out of my mouth. 
it might not look like a whole lot. Huh? But when the raindrop comes, it's got a purpose. <laughs> Amen. When the snow falls, it's got a purpose. When, when the seed hits the ground and, and amen, and it is watered and it begins to burn, it's got a purpose, my friend. And the Lord is saying, when his word goes forth, it's just like that. He said, it will not return unto me void. Huh? Huh? Amen. 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 Let me tell you something. Listen to me. Listen to me. This, this, this one word, arise, is not going to return void. Somebody is getting this thing in their spirit right now. This word arise, this word shine, somebody is getting it in their spirit right now. And it's not going to return void. But the Lord said, it's going to accomplish the thing that I sent it to perform. I stopped by to tell you, my friend, God has put some things in you. And and, 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 and it's not put in you uh, to be void. But 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 he's stirring up some stuff. Oh my goodness, he he's stirring up some things uh, in his people now, and he's he's about to to draw what he's put inside of you. He's about to draw it out of you so the world can see who you are. He said, "Arise and shine." He said, "For thy light." Is come. He say for thy light is come. He said for thy light is come. He said and the glory of the Lord is risen upon thee. You can't shine unless God's light come on you. And what I'm saying, I'm saying that that God is about to do something in your life to manifest his glory. He's getting ready to shine upon you. And I'm talking to you. And you know who I'm talking to. He said, for the glory of the Lord is risen upon thee. Read the next verse. The next verse said, for behold, the darkness shall cover the earth and gross darkness the people. But the Lord shall arise upon thee and his glory shall be seen upon thee. What is going on here? Come on, you got to go beyond the logos and look at the rain. I'm talking to somebody right now. See, there's a whole lot of people around you living in darkness. Listen to me. Listen to me. On your job, family members. But I'm talking to somebody. You are about to rise. And his glory is going to be seen on you. My, 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 my. People are going to see more visible glory on you. You're going to pray. People are going to get healed. How did that happen? How did that happen? Glory to God. Brother Mike shared, shared a testimony with me the other night. Was that the other night or the other day? Other day. How you come here, bro, Mike? Tell me, share, share this, share this with us there. Praise him, everybody. 
Hey man, uh, on one uh, Saturday uh, morning, uh, my wife and I were uh, in the living room, you know, sitting on the couch praying. And I just, uh, after that, we had pulled up Facebook and, you know, just looking at some messages or whatever. And I have a friend of mine that's uh, been knowing her for a, a long time, her and her husband, uh, from Florida. And through the, uh, the conversations that we've always had, that we've always talked about, uh, never really knew that she suffered from depression. I never, never really knew that until uh, not too long ago, just, just now. And she began to talk to me about how uh, she could, you know, just couldn't get out of bed for days. Uh, she was just feeling sorrowful, just down. They're business owners, and, and the, the, the business is kind of going down. And, and, but I knew that there was more than just a business. Uh, I knew that she was suffering from some things, even to the point where she wanted to take her own life. And so uh, uh, I guess that was a couple of Saturdays ago, I guess. I uh, was talking to her. She was feeling real, real low, just real, real down. And so I said, uh, I said hold on a minute, Lord. I said, my wife and I are going to pray for you. And so I, I left Facebook alone, and we began to touch heaven. We began to pray, began to seek the Lord on her behalf, at binding the spirit of depression, binding that, that spirit that's controlling her. And so later on, later on, I, I, I typed in there, I said, well, how you feeling? Her response was, how did you do that? How did you do that? She said, I, I was able to jump out of bed, put my clothes on, clean my house up, take a bath. And I felt some strength. But the most important thing that, that she said she said, how miraculous was that? And when, when I saw that, we began to rejoice. That was a miracle in action based on the power of prayer. Jesus' name. Amen. Come on, let's give God some praise. Hallelujah. Come on, let's give God some praise. If you were the one that got healed, you would be excited, my friend. Glory to God. But the Lord shall arise upon thee, and his glory shall be seen upon thee. Did you hear me say the other day, you're going to start hearing people say, who are you? Huh? They're going to they gonna sense the glory. Come on, don't stick your head up like it's you. Come on, it's, it's glory. It's glory. It's rising. It's rising. Upon the people of God. It's doing it. It's doing it. It's happening right now. How many believe that? It's happening right now. We're coming to a close in 2 Corinthians 3 and 18. It says... But we all with open face, beholding as in a glass, the glory of the Lord are changed into the same image from glory to glory, even as by the spirit of the Lord. If you study that, that chapter, you'll find out that we're talking about how Moses had the veil on his face. And the glory of the Lord was upon him, and he had to veil himself. And even uh, when he came down, the children of Israel could see the glory on him. But Paul was saying, you got the Holy Ghost, and the veil has been removed. 
And he was saying that with an open face beholding as in a glass the glory of the Lord. In other words, Paul was saying, we've got to get close enough to see his glory. We got to get closer to the Lord than we ever been before. And as we get close to him and, and as we look in at the glass of the mirror at the glory of God, guess what's going to happen to us? Transition. That's what change means. See, we are changed into the what? Same image. This year is a year of getting closer to God than you've ever been before. And as you abide in his presence, they that dwelleth in what? The secret place of the most high shall what? Abide under the shadow of the Almighty. As we stand in his presence... Beholding his glory, change is taking place. Change is taking place. In other words, something began to happen to us. That's why Isaiah said, arise, shine. He said, your light has come. Your light has come. By being in the presence of God, something is supernaturally happening to you, to your spirit. Come on, you can't keep abiding in his presence and still have a bad attitude. That bad attitude is going to go, my friend. That bad spirit is going to go. Why? Because something is, ha something is happening. I, I want to pray more. I want to seek God more. I, uh, I believe this year, and you ought to pray for it, you ought to pray for God to give you a hunger for God like never before. Come on, ask him. Or say, well, I, I don't feel hungry enough. Ask him to make you hungry. Come on, he say you receive not because you ask not. Say anything we ask in Jesus' name, he'll give it to us. Why not ask him? I've been praying, Lord, ask me to hunger more for you. Lord, I, uh, I want you to uh, put a yearning in my heart to pray, read, study. Come on. Get on my face before you, God. I, I, want, I, wanna, I want your spirit as I draw nigh to you. I want you to draw nigh to me. But I, I want you to just snatch me and carry me away. In you, Lord. In you. In you. You know, the moon doesn't have a light. The moon is always in darkness. And this whole world is in darkness. The only way we can get light is from the sun. When, when uh, uh, sometimes the sun is so bright during the day, you can't even see the moon in the sky. And then at night, at night, the only way we can see the light of the moon is when the sun reflects off the moon. So the, the light that we receive from the moon is simply a reflection of the sun. Oh, hallelujah. And, and so when the Lord said, arise and shine, people can only see the glory of the Lord when we get in a certain position with him. And when we get in a certain place in God, oh, my goodness. There will be a reflection of the Son of God to a lost and dying world. But the 
they can't see nothing until you get in your place. They can't see his glory until you rise and position yourself. And Isaiah said, rise. In other words, Isaiah was saying, they can't see. you. People can't see nothing until you arise. You're not in the right position until you get up. Come on, when you arise, all of a sudden the light and the glory begin to shine. In other words, get up from being down. Get up from being discouraged. Rise up from being depressed. You got a job to do. And that job is just position yourself in God. So his glory. upon you to reach a lost and a dying world. Let's everybody stand. Let's everybody stand. Let your glory shine. I believe it's all about being obedient unto him. I believe it's all about positioning ourselves so that God can touch our lives. And I'm speaking to somebody today that, that's been down a long time. And you tried to get up, but look like you can't. I stopped by to tell you there's a rainbow word for you today. Rise. Get up. Touch somebody and tell them you can get up. 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 You get up. You've been down too long. It's time to get up. It's time to get up. God wants to shine through you. He wants to shine on you. special time that my light might shine upon you and that the world may see the great things that I have done through you and will do for them also rise up be not discouraged be not dismayed lift up your heads towards me you have nothing to fear you have nothing to be dismayed about I the Lord your God will do a great work in your life I will rebuke the enemy and I will take power over him this is your day, this is your time, and this is your very hour. Be diligent about my work, and great things shall happen to you. Yes. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Glory to God. Yeah. Hallelujah. Bow your heads right now. And as you bow your heads, just, just lift up your hands towards heaven. Hallelujah. I'm going to pray right now. Lord, send your spirit. Holy Spirit, fall in this place. Rest upon us right now. Hallelujah. Glory to God right now, Lord Jesus. God, move right now. 
God, touch hearts right now. Lord, there are special people that you're moving on right now. Somebody's feeling your presence right now. This word was for somebody special today, oh God. You're about to do a great work in their lives. Amen. You're about to do it, Lord, in the name of Jesus. God, those that you're talking to, let them feel your presence. Let them feel your power. Let them feel your anointing right now. Just worship him. Worship him. Glory to God. Worship him. Worship him. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Glory to God. If you feel the presence of the Lord, I want you to come. If you feel anywhere in this service doing the preaching of the word, God was speaking to your heart, I want you to come. 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 If you want his glory, my friend, if you want his glory to rest upon your life, I want you to come. If you're ready to position yourself to shine for his glory, I want you to come. I want you to come. I want you to come. If you feel an unction of the Holy Ghost today, I want you to come. If you need healing in your body, I want you to come. If you need salvation, Holy Ghost, I want you to come. Whatever your need is, come on, let's thank God as they come. Let's thank God as they come. Let's thank God as they come. Thank God. Hallelujah. Let's go. 